this walk we've come over to the western side of the Lake District to near Eskdale Green and we're in Mitredale and today we're going to walk up onto one of the outlying fells called Erton Pike which is just up here behind us and here's the route we're going to take The area for the walk is on the western side of Cumbria, about five miles east of the village of Gosforth. There's a good free car parking area just through the gate that leads to the forest. From there we'll go over the bridge that crosses the river Mitre and then head up into the forest. A good footpath leads us up to the ridge where at the wall we'll turn west and head down towards Erton Pike. From Erton Pike summit we'll take a steep descent down to the road, a short section of road walking and then we turn left, which is east, in through the forest, and back to the car park at the start. Now we know where we're going, let's head on. After crossing the bridge, we keep to the left up a good forestry track into the plantation. After about 600 metres we leave the forestry track and take the good path that leads uphill to the right. It's really just a case of following the path uphill, crossing a few forestry tracks and heading up towards the ridge. Nice and quiet here in the forest, not many people about. Then you come across this memorial seat to Neil Cannon. And it's a seat with not a bad view. As you look through the opening in the forest you can see Hartefell and Green Crag way over there. There are worse places to have a seat. But we carry on up the path. After gaining a bit of height, we leave the forest and reach an open area which has been previously felled. Good spot to have a sit for a couple of minutes. I always remember this path and this route and I think it features on Windrig 6 and it's the route of descent of, or ascent of Windrig from Mitredale in the pictorial guide and I remember some years ago when I was looking for references for the Wainwrights in colour I came down this way purposefully because I knew that I had to look for the sign which I call the Eskdale Fish. As you have a look at that page, you'll see there's a little wooden signpost, Eskdale Fish, that Wainwright drew. And of course, that was in the, well, probably late 60s by the time he was working on book four. And so I thought, well, I'll come out and have a look for that um, signpost, but I had a good idea. It was never going to be around after 50 years because it would be right by the path and someone would have either stolen it or it would have rotted away. So what I did on that walk I set off from Mitterdale and I walked up round Ilgill Head, over Windrig and down this way looking for the sign. But as a reserve backup, what I'd done at home, I had made a replica of the fish in old wood. I'd painted it to look old. I'd even stuck a couple of rusty nails in it and stuck some moss on it. And uh, I brought it with me all the way round on the route in my rucksack, so it was sticking out the top of my rucksack. And I got to here, it was dark, it was late evening, and I got the fish sign out of my rucksack and I set it on the side of the path or I jammed it into a wall and I photographed it. And on the 1st of April that year, I can't remember which year it was, it was probably like 2014, 2015, I made a blog and I posted it up and of course the reaction was amazing. People couldn't believe that in all my research I'd found this fish. And of course I posted it on the 1st of April, so it was a joke. And it was only when I had the exhibition in 2009, so it must be before then, of course, um, I had this fish on display and people had thought either I'd stolen it and then I explained what I'd done. 
it was a daft thing to do because obviously I had to make the fish first. I had to walk all the way around with it, then I had to pose it. But at least I got the painting um, of this fish sign because of all the 1508 references in the book, but I didn't want to be missing that one. So that's what I did. And uh, so a lot of people got the joke and the, 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 the fell was actually bought by a friend of mine, uh, a, a couple called um, Jenny and Kevin Worley. And so when they bought the Wynn Rig fell, I gave them the fish because obviously it features in that chapter and I know it hangs on their wall. Sadly, um, Kevin has recently passed away. So doing this walk today, I can't help but think of him. Here's to Kevin. The gradient now eases, and in a short distance we reach the wall that runs the length of the ridge, and we'll go through the gate. Now we've reached the highest point of the ridge, there's a crossing of paths up to the east that will carry on the ridge right up to Winrig. In front of us we'll take a path down into Wasdale, but we're going to head left over to the west, down to Erton Pike, which I can see beyond us there. In fact, it's a little bit lower than where we are now. That's why when we get to this um, chapter in the Outlying Fells book, it looks a bit odd because Erton Pike is actually only 751 feet. And the, the amount of ascent in the walk is actually something like 850. So the ascent in the walk is actually higher than the place you're going to, which is quite odd. What's unusual about this point as well is that it's where the Southern Fells book and the Outlying Fells book meet and they both share one path. Windrig 6, the ascent from Mitterdale, takes you up to Windrig and it's the same path that you would use in the Erton Pike chapter of the Outlying Fells book that would bring you up and then take you around to the top of that fell. And that's quite unusual. But Erton Pike's where we're heading now. This is all that remains of the old level. There's two about here, but it's just a pile of stones. Maybe something in there, but not gonna have a look for today. And then the spoil heap that comes out this way. Not sure what the product was that they were after, but it's been reclaimed by nature now. You can hardly tell it's here. Not massive. Not a bad place to work though. Overgrown now. And we'll head on to Erton Pike. The more we walk down the ridge, the more wasp water comes into view. And now at the very far end, you can see Great Gable. Great view this, considering we're on such a, a low fell. Well worth coming up. Before we get to 
Erton Pike. We have to walk through that forest that you can see in front of us. But I just want to take a little diversion to this. A pile of rocks, now with a Christmas tree in it. Well, a fir tree. And in the original version of the Outlying Fells book, Wainwright marks this as a stone cairn, but he also questions it as to what it's about. Is it an ancient feature of antiquity or a cairn, a tumuli, or just a pile of stones that the forestry workers have put together? And he actually doesn't come up with an answer. But in the 2008 version of the Ordnance Survey map, they mark it as a cairn circle. Yeah, I think it's a cairn circle or stone circle. I mean, it's not much of a circle. And as you can see, when I said Christmas tree, someone's even come all the way up here to put a Christmas bauble on it. But yeah, it's just one of these interesting features that Wainwright mentions when he's writing in the pictorial guides or the outlying fells that I find interesting enough to go and have a look and explore. Maybe someone does know what it's for, but there we are. I've been and seen it. Now we just have to walk on and we're heading into the forest in the direction of the top of Erton Pike. I know in the revised version of the Outlying Fells book it says take a sketchy path towards a stile. And this is it. Oh dear. Should have brought a hammer and nails. So we cross here and then go in through the woods. Time to give Bailey a lift I think. Come on, go on, go on. That needs a bit of repair. Never mind. Let's walk on. Great view. Right over to the North Sea. And then behind us, Great Gable, Wind Rig, Heart of Fell. Grand. And that'll be Moncaster Fell in front of us, I think. What a lovely top. And rightly so in the Outline Fells book. What I've discovered about the outlying fells is that as part of doing the Lakeland 365 project and coming to these lesser known tops and outlying fell tops, especially with Bailey getting on a bit, as Wainwright said, they're, <laughs> they're fells for retired people, but they're more than that. There's, there's plenty of good little tops which have got interest with cracking views. And anyway, we're going to take a route down off Erton Pike and we'll pick up the road for a short bit before heading back through the forest and back to the start. Our route of descent is on the faint path that leads directly from the summit, down towards the road. At first going down through the heather and grass, and then steeply down through the trees.
Well, that was a short, steep descent. Steeper in places than I expected with a few rocky bits, but yeah, if you wanted to do a very quick ascent, you'd have to go that way, but it would be a bit hard work. Meantime, we're going to get back to the road, which is just down here. Walk down there for a short distance before we head back into the woods. It's not ideal walking along a road like this, especially when it's a little bit bendy, but uh, needs must. And after about 500 meters or so, we'll cross over and we go down here to get off the road. Now we're in the revised pictorial guide, the route takes you all the way back down to the uh, at Park Ray Railway Station, I think it is. But we're going to cut back through the woods and avoid some of that road walking. This is an interesting sign. Mitredale. Now, this is the only time that I've seen Mitredale, spelled M-I-T-R-E, whereas on the Ordnance Survey maps, it's spelled M-I-T-E-R, Mitredale. So I don't know which is correct, but I'd generally go for the Ordnance Survey version. But, out of interest, isn't it? Which would mean that the pronunciation is mitre, like in a bishop's hat, or the corner of a frame, as I know it, mitering. Anyway, we'll go through the gate. We walked through the forestry for about a kilometre, and we're now at the point that we came up earlier, where we came through the gate down there, and as we came up, we turned up right up this footpath. But instead of going back down to the gate, what we're going to do is going to take this path footpath down to the right and that'll take us to a bridge and that'll lead us back to a car park that way. It'll just be a, a little bit of a different end to the route. It's a lovely section of walk down through a deciduous wood to reach the bridge that crosses the river Mitre. This way, and this will be back towards the car. Here we are back at the start. As you can see, it's not a car park that gets very busy. Might be busier at weekends, but there's not many signs of rubbish and overuse, so it looks pretty good. So it must be a cup of tea time now. I'll get the kettle on and I believe this afternoon's cake specialty is chocolate and beetroot, homemade. So I look forward to a piece of that. Now, I find that a really nice, interesting walk, enjoyable. Uh, if you've liked this one, do remember, it's much appreciated if you click the like button and even better, subscribe to my channel because I'll put more films on shortly. 
I hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching.